This strange looking thing, is a 3 inch pancake Geiger Muller tube. It was kindly sent to us by a viewer from the USA, but is actually a Russian made tube, that dates back to the Soviet era. Today, we are going to give this tube a new lease of life. We are going to turn it into a probe, and then we are going to convert a cheap Chinese Geiger counter, to be able to use this gigantic Geiger Muller tube. And once we have done that, we are going to test the crap out of this thing, and figure out if this vintage radiation sensor, still outperforms more modern tubes. Right, let's crack on with it. We have actually done a similar type of conversion before, we added an external probe to this perfectly shitty, HFS-10. This time we are going to start with a better model of Geiger counter, one that we have reviewed and found to be about the best available, at least for a sub $50 detector. This is the Bosian FS5000. It is by no means a perfect radiation detector, but it is pretty suitable for this kind of project. Best of all, it won't cost us a king's ransom if we screw it up. These kinds of old pancake detector tubes, are still available on eBay to buy. But, it needs to be said, they are pretty expensive, and as you will see later, there were a few complications with getting this conversion process completed. The first thing we had to do, was to create the enclosure for this pancake detector tube. So, let's see how that process worked out. When designing products, it is always important to think carefully about design language. Sometimes, the spark of inspiration comes from the natural world. Some designers are inspired by the colors and patterns, others are driven by the forms and flows we see around us. And some designers, well they just have a total brain fart. So, we took a look at other devices in the market that also use these pancake Geiger Muller tubes, and we were suddenly hit by a flash of inspiration. Yes indeed, the humble shower head has a lot going for it. So, armed with our bathroom themed design language, we got busy with pushing some 3D pixels together. Then it was just a matter of printing this stuff out. Which means we can do another of those time lapse sequences, just like real YouTube creators do. What was absolutely amazing about this particular project, was that we literally printed everything out just one time. It was either a special alignment of the stars, or my human assistant's mental fog had temporarily lifted. Either way, it was a rare lucky break. We created a plastic grill, later we will be covering this in a mylar film. We also added a fan cover to protect this sensitive probe from heavy abuse. We also designed the device to have captive retaining nuts. As we all know, there is nothing worse than dropping one's nuts. To be frank, my human assistant doesn't need any help, when it comes to dropping a bollock. We painted the parts in some snazzy colors, it doesn't really match the Geiger counter, but these were the colors we have left over from some other projects, so this is what we are going to run with. We bought some 1 micron thick metallized mylar film. Because this is so thin, it is both very expensive and incredibly difficult to work with. We attached a layer of this, to the underside of the plastic grill and held it in place with some contact glue, that was applied to the back of the grill. This mylar film has been added to help prevent any contamination from entering the probe. Because this is so thin, it is pretty transparent to alpha particles, something we are hoping to be able to measure with this new probe. Inside the probe, is a 4.7 megohm anode resistor, and everything is electrically connected to a cable, using an SMA style RF connector. The metal fan grill might seem like overkill, but this Geiger Muller tube is very easily damaged. 
Given it was a gift from a viewer, we do feel pretty obligated to treat it with great care. With our probe fully constructed, we can now move on to making the changes to the Geiger counter, to accommodate this wonderful new detector tube. Now, it is time to make the changes to this cheap Chinese Geiger counter, that will allow it to have the option of using an external probe. So first, we are going to start cutting and drilling this poor little thing. Being inanimate myself, it always pains me to watch my human assistant, causing unnecessary harm to devices like this. That said, we are just amputating the part that retains the optional wrist strap, so we can just consider this to be a little cosmetic surgery. Surgery, that involves a hacksaw. As you can see, the results aren't going to win any beauty contests. So we tried to hide the damage, with a liberal amount of sanding and some polishing, but it really didn't help very much. The FS5000, is an old friend of mine, and we have been through a lot together. So, please understand if I am too squeamish to show the parts of this process, that involves drilling. At this point, we were going to go into a lot of details, about how to rewire the unit so that you can switch between using the internal standard tube, and an external one. But, my ham-fisted human assistant, managed to break the FS5000 during this process. That's right, he killed my old friend. Ho hum, let's move on. So we bought a brand new one and started again, this time, being a little more careful with where the high voltage was getting applied. So, instead of helping people to destroy their own devices, we just figured that if you are the sort of person that can figure out how to install a double pole changeover switch, then you don't need our help anyway. And although it looks like a bit of a wiring salad, it is far neater, than the complete botch job we did on the HFS-10 conversion. Okay, we now have a pancake Geiger Muller tube mounted in a glorified shower head. We also have a Geiger counter that has a special salad inside, so, we should get on and do some testing of our new toy. Right, let's figure out if this was worth the time and effort, not to mention the sad demise of an old friend. Before we get into testing this new probe, we wanted to just touch on our previous experience at adding an external probe, to a cheap Geiger counter. This HFS-10 device, comes with an internal Geiger Muller tube, that is frankly, little better than a piece of dog turd. So, we added a better tube, as an external probe that can be switched in and out of circuit. This gave this device a significant boost in its performance. And, when we attach our new shower head inspired probe, we get a far stronger reaction. It should be pointed out that most of these cheap Geiger counters will limit the clicking sounds once the count rate, exceeds some predetermined threshold. But, when we connected our new probe to the FS5000, we found a problem. Well, of course we did. It seems that the FS5000 is rather sensitive to the amount of capacitance, in the probe and cable. So we changed to a lower capacitance cable for these tests, and we also tinkered with the internal circuits of the device itself, which appeared to improve the situation. So, let's get on and run a background measurement, and see how this thing performs. First we are going to run a 5 minute test using the internal GM tube, it is always useful to have a baseline. Here, in this apartment in Shenzhen, China, we are expecting a dose rate of around 15 microsieverts per hour of background radiation. With the calibration that this device applies, that roughly translates to about 30 counts per minute. 
In the end we get an average over 5 minutes, of 32 counts per minute, so pretty close to the expected value. So far, so good. Now, let's change over to this pancake probe and repeat this process. And now, for the moment of truth. How sensitive is this probe? Will the poorly matched event counter circuit in the FS5000 cause any significant issues? This tube is clearly more sensitive, but how much more sensitive? In the end, we get an average count rate of 147 counts per minute. That's an increase of about four and a half times. Which is a pretty disappointing result, we were expecting a sensitivity that was about six times that of the J321 tube. Right, let's push on and measure some test sources. First, let's test with americium 241. This, predominantly decays with the release of an alpha particle, but there is also a small amount of low energy, gamma radiation emitted as well. We are dearly hoping that this probe is also sensitive to alpha particles, it would make it a very useful addition to our equipment. We end up getting an average count rate of 1.96 kilo counts per minute. Next we will repeat this test, but we will attempt to block the alpha particles, and see how the recorded dose rate changes. This small strip of paper, should block almost all of the alpha particles, leaving only the gamma rays to be detected by the probe. Almost immediately, it became pretty obvious that the count rate was almost completely unchanged, which was disappointing. The difference between the average dose rates was only about one count per second, and that could be explained by the tiny amount of shielding that this paper is adding. After all, these are very low energy gamma rays. So, we figured we would try again, but this time with the plastic grill and the mylar removed. Everything else in this test remains unchanged. As would be expected, the count rate was higher than with the grills fitted. But sadly, we were not able to detect any appreciable drop in the count rate from the addition of a piece of paper. We have to conclude that this tube is not sensitive to alpha particles. Okay, time to speed run through some of our other check sources. What we did discover though is that this tube is incredibly sensitive to low energy emissions of beta and gamma. In fact, it was a genuine surprise just how sensitive this thing is. I really wish we had had this when we made a little video about some beta particle experiments, it would have made those experiments so much easier. But here is the real surprise. Tritium gas is a very low energy beta emitter, when those slow moving beta particles strike the fluorescent coating, that is on the inside of the vials, they release a minuscule amount of very low energy x-rays. This is something that even our gamma ray spectrometers struggle to measure. Yet here we are, measuring this with a cheap Geiger counter. Okay, this isn't the highly sensitive alpha detection tube that we thought it might be, but it is really sensitive to gamma and beta, especially at low energies. It is also a very beautiful piece of equipment, and it is almost a shame to cover it. Especially when we are covering it in such an ugly enclosure, that looks like it was designed by a toddler, using wax crayons. I suspect that we will be creating new holders for this tube, we have some experiments in mind for this, and we are already thinking about what's next for this sensitive detector. We also need to figure out a more sophisticated interfacing circuit, to allow it to be interfaced to cheaper counters, like the FS5000. With the tube exposed, we noticed some interesting discharges occurring when detecting strong sources. This can also be seen on small, low-cost glass tubes too, but usually only when the tube is being driven with a voltage that is at, or above the top end of the acceptable range. 
We also tested this tube for sensitivity to ultraviolet light, but this didn't get any response. We are driving this tube at the correct voltage, so we didn't actually expect any. Soon, we will be concluding our video series about this topic, so stay tuned for that. It has to be said, that we were amazed that with this tube, we were able to detect the super low energy, bremsstrahlung emissions from these tritium vials. We were getting count rates of at least four times the background level from these. I can tell you that was a pleasant surprise for us. So, in summary, we probably didn't manage to get the best sensitivity from this tube, it will need a lower capacitance interfacing circuit to achieve that. The probe we designed is pretty ugly, but functionally adequate. What this probe has done, is stimulated quite a few ideas about possible future projects. And finally. Can you guess what this little tube does? Hopefully it will be the topic of our next video. We will pin the first correct answer in the comments. Anyway, that's all we have for you today. We hope you enjoyed our little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you think we deserve it, then please feel free to give it a like. And you could always hit subscribe, if you want to see more content like this. On the last few videos, we have enabled YouTube advertising, we hate to do it as it ruins the viewing experience, but all of these videos, require investments in equipment and materials. We get precious few super chat donations. We would like to thank for following viewers for their donations to our projects fund. It's you guys, that really help us to have the opportunity to screw up so many fine experiments. This is still a hobby channel, so we can say what we want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time. You now have, only a very short time, to choose the next video to watch.